Welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Amya Kumar Das, associated with the Department of Sociology, Tejpur University. Uh, today, in this module, we will learn about academic dependency as a part of contemporary social theory. If uh, we look at uh, the whole world uh, and the production of knowledge and its system, it uh, looks like it is biased and mostly based on this Western principle. Many scholars, they have criticized the whole idea of this dependency factor, which basically started in and around 1950s and 60s in Latin America context. Later on, there are many works which are based on this criticism, such as Edward Said's Orientalism, academic imperialism, Eurocentrism, so on and so forth. But today, in this session, we are concerned about the question and the concept on academic dependency. Academic dependency, along with other similar concepts, they try to interrogate the knowledge and the concept ideas generated in the Western context. Even if they are not generated in the Western context or in the Western part, even if they are generated in the peripheries, it argues that these ideas and minds are colonized. They are influenced by this colonization. So, the aim of this concept to sensitize and to raise pertinent questions on how to decolonize the mind, how to reduce or break this dependency that is developed in the form of academic dependency. As we have seen and still we have that factor how many of these theories, many of these ideas are completely controlled in the western part. There is a inherent relationship between the power and knowledge. So the knowledge is generated, so it is also taking a path of power and trying to control the whole world, including the social, the cultural, the economic, the political, so on and so forth. So today in this module, we would try to unwind the whole idea of how knowledge is generated, how these academic practices are going on, and how to locate and interrogate this relationship, that power and knowledge, how this uh, dependency syndrome, the dependency factor, and inequality, discrimination, hierarchy, everything we would try to look at from this perspective of academic dependency. Who is Syed Farid Alatas? He is a sociologist associated with the National University of Singapore. Before joining the University of Singapore, he taught for a while at the University of Malaya in the Department of South Asian Studies. His key areas of interest are uh, sociology of religion, historical sociology, sociology of social sciences, so on and so forth. He was particularly interested in the power relations and the dependency factor of this knowledge production between the East, West or West or non-West. He also tries to look at the scholarship of Ibn Khaldun of, as a founder of sociology. He was greatly influenced by his father, Syed Hussain Alata's work on this uh, dependency and mostly on the concept of captive mind. So Alatas since then continuously and meticulously with intensity he has engaged himself on the question of this dependency factor bringing in various kind of arguments developed in the non-western or peripheral sector to demonstrate 
how biased this knowledge production system is, especially in the domain of humanities and social sciences. So he tries to build up a kind of uh, group or to form and he keeps appealing to the fellow social scientists that we should have a strong dialogue to decolonize, to deconstruct this kind of biased knowledge system which is formed on the basis of Western thought which is, uh, is kind of undermining that other forms of knowledge system. So um, generally in around 16th century, uh, as we have seen the world history, uh, many countries uh, were uh, colonized by this uh, European and Western world. Uh, then uh, what happened it continued uh, till a long time they exploited uh, politically economically uh, these uh, third world countries were uh, plundered by them but towards the end and the uh, beginning of and the middle of the 20th century and in and around the second world war uh, they were uh, getting uh, means uh, they were free uh, from this uh, colonization process but those freedom only came in the form of physical freedom, independence in the term of only this political and governing own uh, country or nation. But if you will look at technically, they again started and before that also they started ruling and governing this colonized country in the forms of ideas, in the forms of education, in the form of knowledge systems. They introduced a kind of education where they captured the mind of the indigenous people or the local people. They showed the kind of history they started practicing or doing in the colonized world that was based on this European idea. They started practicing a kind of knowledge which were based on this European knowledge system and they devalued the local knowledge system and tried to establish a form or the practice which were totally based on this European or the Western system. Thereby, they killed the whole uh, local or indigenous form of knowledge or the practice or that for that matter, they created such a kind of environment where it was shown that only the Western form of science is true form of knowledge or the Western form of practices in terms of science is the only thing which is correct and other things they devalued either in terms of irrational, illogical uh, or uh, traditional or conventional for that matter and they also brought a kind of superstitious uh, stigma uh, attached to the all form of knowledge practices. So in a way what happened? It was also characterized in the form of they capture the mind. So it was also uh, discussed by the critics like the captive mind of this uh, colonized world. So if we look at overall that how in a form of this political and economic colonization and exploitation until they were free from this uh, captivity or uh, colonization, even then these countries in the periphery, in the third world, or in the non-Western part of the world, they were dependent academically and they were dependent and exploited. So this module tries to understand what, in what ways this dependence syndrome is related and what are the ways we can combat it and what are the ways we can establish a democratic platform where you can have a meaningful dialogue alternative form of knowledge system which is uh, in that uh, in a uh, equal uh, field whereas if we look at the present condition where the form of knowledge or the practices whatever forms of practices we are having totally dominated or colonized or captured by the western form of knowledge system. One thing happened is that the most indigenous form of knowledge ceased to exist during the colonial period. A few were revived after colonialism, but these are the reconstruction of the past system based on an understanding of them which came through this western form of knowledge. Further, any form of this uh, formal system of knowledge practices 
which were institutionalized suppose in the institutions organizations school colleges these were based on the western form of thinking western form of world views if you look at this curriculum designing if you look at this uh, uh, kind of uh, syllabi these were initially based on this western views of the world whatever knowledge system or practices were there prior to this colonization either they died or even if they tried to recover it from this earlier days then again it took a form of this modern or so called modern or this western no it took the form of western notion where the even the local people they started looking or taking the reality which were informed or which were influenced by the western notion of the uh, knowledge system or western system of world views another concept he is interested in is the academic imperialism according to said farid alatas academic imperialism he quotes said husain alatas and says that this is the kind of uh, way where one person's rule over another person's world of thinking that means in academic imperialism even if we do not want and do not express or do not want to be ruled or governed by other ideas it comes in that whatever thing we think or visualize or perceive that is influenced or governed by somebody else's idea in that context he is using that idea of academic imperialism he gives example and say says that it happens in two levels one is direct level another one is indirect level directly these researchers and academicians they either they are involved in the research project or some production of knowledge directly or with the institutions or universities or the projects of the western world and they produce their knowledge according to the ways of the western world another one is the indirect way of influence that is having on these academicians of the non west world where even if they are not directly involved in the research or the project they tend to be governed by the whole ideas of the western world where they kind of they hardly get that freedom of taking themselves away from this colonized form of knowledge system or that captivity which always follow them like a shadow and it is very difficult so in this sense alatas is using this word academic imperialism so as you have seen that colonialism is maintained by the condition of academic dependency that is what said farid alatas argues he says through this distinguished and monopolistic control maintained by force during this colonial period but after this colonization was over this form of control which is going on through this academic exploitation and academic colonization which he describes as academic de dependency is more insidious so he argues that this academic dependency or this colonization of knowledge or academia is more dangerous because it ruins the whole civilization it ruins the whole culture it ruins or damages a knowledge system which is more dangerous and damaging than the earlier form of colonization according to him he argues and tries to show that how this growth and development of knowledge or the progress of social sciences is attached to development only in the western countries 
that is not equally distributed or equally that is flowing to the non-western world. There is a discrepancy, there is a hierarchy, difference. That is what damaging for the whole knowledge system, especially in the domain of social sciences and humanities. This Syed Hussain Alatas talks about this captive mind, this kind of inequality, exploitation in a general and overall level. But here, Syed Farah Alatas, he talks about it, its social and epistemic dimension of this colonization, where he clearly distinguishes between the two forms of knowledge and he tries to show that how one form of knowledge is trying to influence and guide and capture the other form, the so-called the other, which is non-Western form of knowledge in viewing, in perceiving or in understanding the social reality. Academic dependency functions at two levels. These two levels are the level of ideas and the structural level. Said Farid Alatas also lists six dimensions of academic dependency. The first corresponds to the first level at which academic dependency functions and the remaining five can be seen as a dimensions of the structural level. Dimensions of academic dependency. As mentioned earlier, academic de dependency can be delineated through six dimensions that Said Farid Alatas puts forward. The first dimension corresponds to the level of ideas, the first level at which academic dependency operates and the next five to the structural level and these are dependence on ideas, dependence on the media of ideas, dependence on the technology of education, dependence on aid for research as well as teaching, dependence on investment in education, dependence of third world social scientists on demand in the West for their skill. So, if we try to quickly look at all these six dimensions, we can see that how these are clearly pointing towards this kind of academic dependency. The first one is the dependence on ideas. Dependence on ideas means whatever general or theoretical or conceptual category is being developed, we hardly try to develop it in our own context. That means in the peripheral world. Mostly the ideas are generated in the western world and the peripheral world academic sphere is dependent on the western world. The problem is that the world views or this perception of the world which is generated in the western side designed according to their realities, according to that context. Where it comes to the non-western world, it has a different dimension altogether. So it is difficult. That is where he is arguing that we are operating in a world where this knowledge system is biased. Then we have different categories of uh, structural level where we have to depend on various kind of uh, med uh, medium of exchange of ideas where uh, these are all publications and other things are controlled by the western world. Uh, things are related to each other. Then if you go to the technology of teaching, then if you go to the research, whatever we have enlisted here, these are all related to each other and if you analyze all the dimensions, all the six dimensions which are having the part of academic dependency, it points toward the western side where they are more successful in this kind of agenda or 
we, we can also call it as a kind of propaganda where we think or made to believe that this Western notion or the Western uh, knowledge is more supreme, more powerful, more truthful in a way, more factual than the non-Western form of knowledge practices whereby we acknowledge it and we try to practice it even knowingly or unknowingly. Alatas also talks it in a form of a division of labor. Like uh, the Latin American scholar, like the economist, historian, sociologist, they have shown how the whole world has been polarized in different kind of uh, zones. Uh, for that matter, we have uh, center, periphery, semi-periphery, so on and so forth. And there, they have also shown how the division of labor is happening in that system or that world system. In this context, Alatas has brought that uh, system into this uh, context of academic dependency. And in this academic division of labor, he suggests that the division of labor is historically a direct consequence of the academic colonialism and dependency. He is pointing this to the factor of academic colonialism and dependency and trying to show this knowledge production is always a biased form of knowledge system because it happened and originated in the form of colonialism. So, it also turned and functions to the perpetuate academic neo-colonialism and dependency. He is taking it one step further by pointing it to this neo-colonialism form and looking at in the term of dependency. So, it's a product of it's a product of the colonial mode of knowledge production that is what he argues. So, to uh, include it in a form of division of labor, he shows there are basically three kinds of division of labor between these two worlds. One is in the form of research that is empirical research and theoretical research. That is the intellectual division of labor he is referring to. That how these two worlds, they are divided in terms of research. One does in the form of empirical research. Another one does in the form of theoretical research. Another form of distinction is that one is studying own country. The other one is study other country. Western countries, they study other country. Whereas in the developing nation, they study own country. Another form of uh, division of labor, he points out to that notion of uh, this uh, studies, the form of this uh, western world, they focus morely on the comparative studies, whereas the developing nation, they focus mostly on the case studies kind of thing. So, that is what he is uh, discussing in the forms of that academic division of labor between these two zones. So, to uh, yet combat with this form of academic division, we need to work at two levels, he suggests. He suggests this, th that we need to work at two levels. Uh, these are administrative level and one is academic or intellectual level. He says, he proposes that idea that in that the perspective, in the administrative level, we need to change the perspective on the social science, more or less in in, 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 uh, in the developing nations, they only look at social science as a form of policy and the program. They only include or give importance in terms of as a policy or the program uh, referring to uh, designing this kind of framework. But rather he argues that it should be treated as a sincere and serious discipline. It should be this, they should be regarded as a discipline. And then in the various practices should be included, incentives should be given to the various kind of uh, faculty members and the researcher of the developing nations so that good people and serious people can work more seriously and efficiently in these institutions. And then the tertiary education should be more strong and they should in the non-Western world should be developed and established seriously without depending on the Western world. And the intellectual level, it should be taken seriously, that there should be a redesigning of syllabus and framework free from this colonized world. 
that the research and publication should be taken seriously and it should have the independent forum. Various kind of non-Western world and developing nations scholars should they should interact with each other and create a platform where they can channelize and establish this alternative form of knowledge system which is free from the Western world. So these are the few things he has suggested to convert the academic dependence in the two level. Mostly one is in administrative level and another one is intellectual level. So to conclude this session or to conclude this uh, discussion on academic dependency, we could say firmly that Alatas has taken it from a historical point where he sees that various parts of the world which were not so strong during that time, mostly the non-Western world were colonized by the Western countries and they got independence towards the end of the Second World War and they were free from this physical uh, control. But this control in terms of or the colonization in terms of ideas, knowledge and academic practices still continued and according to him this physical colonization the political colonizations were less uh, dangerous than the academic dependency or academic colonization because it you cannot see physically but it can ruin the whole form of the knowledge system in your uh, territory. The most important thing he continuously engages himself with the notion is that how still we the in the, in the uh, part of the developing nations the majority of the academics and academicians are influenced or directly or indirectly governed by this western world of the knowledge system and the university and colleges because they are the nature of research they take off in the periphery the nature of relationships the bonding they are having the relationship the kind of exploitative relationship they are having in terms of knowledge formation as you have seen he is very critical to the western form of knowledge in terms of the science that empirical science that modern science which claims it to be far more superior than any other forms of knowledge and which subjugates the other forms of knowledge to destroy it or either to succumb it to your own umbrella and create and establish a kind of hegemony so that it can completely colonize and mold other forms of knowledge system to adopt the modern knowledge system which is generated in the West. So he suggests various procedure steps mostly in terms of two level at the intellectual level and the administrative level to combat and fight this academic dependency and appeals to all the researchers and the academicians of the non-Western world to come together to establish a platform and gener generate an alternative system of form of knowledge system where that will be helpful for us to understand our reality and social processes. For more information or for the e-text and references, please log on to the website of EPG Partsala. You can have more readings, references and for that matter it will give you more ideas on the concept of academic dependency or the captive mind thank you